Hello, everyone. Welcome to CAFMA Connect. This week, you got, unfortunately, the Assistant Chief of Administration, Dave Tharp, and we also have a special guest, Adrian Campula. Is that how you say your last name? No. Kump- say your <laughs> Kumpula. Kumpula. Wow. See, that's why we have you on here, so that you can clear that up right off the get-go. Um, <clears throat> the topic of this week's discussion is affordable housing. And the reason why I asked Adrian to come on is basically to give us his perspective on uh, affordable housing in the area. Adrian, how long have you been with CAFMA? A little over two and a half years. Okay, so two and a half years. So you weren't around when, say, right out of the recession in this area in 2008, 2009, when the housing market kind of crashed and then all the prices kind of got reset at that point. No, I was not. So you're here basically when the housing market was just kind of taking off and especially in the last year where it's really kind of peaked up. Yes. Okay. Where did you live at before? Uh, well, let me ask you a question. When you first applied for CAFMA, where did you live at? Uh, down in New River, so just north of Phoenix. Okay. And had you lived there a long time or just kind of uh, grown up in that area? You lived with your family? or I grew up down in Phoenix, and then I moved to New River uh, about three and a half years before I got hired. Okay, great. And did you want to kind of look at or move into this area when you eventually applied here? Or were you just kind of like, uh, I'm good with being in New River and just it'd be nice to, to move up into the Prescott area? No, once I got hired, I wanted to move up here and, okay. and it worked out to move up. Yeah. And you have a family, is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. And so uh, do your kids go up to school and, and your wife works here and stuff? Uh, no, my wife works at home okay. taking care of the kids and the kids are homeschooled. Okay, perfect. So you don't have to worry about necessarily, you know, school districts and all that kind of stuff as well. Nope. Okay, perfect. And uh, just out of curiosity, when you decided to move up here, um, what made it so that you could possibly look at that look at that transition? Uh, the time was good, so I was able to sell my house for a good profit. Okay. And then the plan was to then build my build my own house with the profits and have pretty much no mortgage. Right. And buy like a piece of property and then slowly yep. build your house over time. That's correct. Okay. All right. That's a great, I mean, you know, uh, that's a, what a lot of people do. They kind of move into this area because there's uh, a lot of opportunities to buy property. Then they kind of get in here and they're like, Hey, listen, I think I can build a house, especially with firefighters, right? All mm-hmm. of us seem to have a second profession and we deal with concrete or masonry or framing or whatever. And so it ends up being where that that be kind of tends to lend itself to being able to do that. Um, just out of curiosity, again, if you hadn't sold your house and maybe had looked at the pricing of homes in this area or housing in this area, do you think that you would have been able to afford it? I guess I'm not sure how how high they were at that time, but right now it's it's pretty expensive. So yeah, on firefighter wages, it'd be pretty tough to to move up here. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Adrian. I really appreciate that. And I know that in some ways I was kind of leading you down a a road there. But the reason why we're here today is to talk about affordable housing. And affordable housing isn't just a fire department issue. It is a community issue. And the reason why I point that out is, is because when we talk about affordable housing, a lot of people have the misconception that, oh, we're going to go and put in low income housing into areas. And that low income housing breeds more calls, Mm -hmm. maybe, uh, you know, a certain uh, demographic of type of people that is going to be uh, causing more crime or some sort of uh, blige on on the community. And that's not really the case. What we're talking about in affordable housing is, is retention of people. And I say that in all honesty, because whether it's public safety, fire department people, police officers, um, hospital workers, teachers, um, even the people that are in the service industry, if they're unable to afford housing in the area, then guess where they're going to go? Anywhere but in that area. And especially, just like you said, if our wages can't meet up to whatever your needs are, then what are you going to be looking for as well? Mm -hmm. A job somewhere else. And what we're seeing in our organization is we're fortunate. We're one of the fortunate organizations in CAFMA that we actually have a good recruitment and retention um, group. We don't have a lot of people leaving because of pay issues or because of necessarily uh, problems within the culture of the organization. 
But what we're starting to see a creep over is more and more of our people are moving outside of the area. Or they're living outside of the area and they really are having a hard time affording to come into the area. And so I think that what we would like to do is, is kind of help um, change part of that. Now, as I said before, this is a community problem. And when I say community, it is affecting Chino Valley, Prescott Valley, Prescott. Um, I know that all three school districts are actively looking at housing for people within the community so that they can turn around and afford as teachers to live in the area, which unfortunately teachers get paid even less than what firefighters do. Now, you had a unique re um, uh, situation recently where you actually were housed at one of our reserve stations. Can you talk about what the arrangement was at that reserve station? Uh, so the arrangement, the reserve station, station 52, is basically it's a, it's a trailer house on fire department mm -hmm. property. Right. And so we can live at that trailer house. We purchase it. We own the trailer house. And in that agreement, then you have to take care of the apparatus at that location. And then when you're done with that, or when you move somewhere else from that property, then you sell it to another firefighter. And they basically take on the duties of taking care of the apparatus and the grounds. Right. And we have two of those. We have one at Station 56 and one at Station 52. One's at Ponderosa Park. The other one's at Highland Pines. Mm -hmm. We've had those for as far back as I can remember. We used to have one also out in Station 57's area, which is on Williamson Valley Road across from Granite Oaks. Um, a lot of people call us because they want to be able to utilize that building. But unfortunately, the lease agreements that we have are with state land. And because we don't own the property and they have rescinded their lease from us, then we can't utilize that building. In your particular case, we have two agreements with the Forest Service for leasing the property at Station 56 and 52. And so part of that is, is that it does offer us an opportunity, just like you said, to put a manufactured home on that site, which the firefighters sell to one another, if you will, um, so that they can turn around and live there for a little bit less cost of living. Mm -hmm. And it gives them an opportunity to maybe save some money so that they can eventually maybe get into something more permanent. Um, that's a very short-term agreement. And most cases, uh, nobody lives there for an extended period of time, right? They, mm -hmm. they want to move on to something better. I guess <clears throat> we have talked about, as an organization, of buying a piece of property. We've even talked about developing at our training center a small subdivision up in that front section that instead of necessarily putting in, which was originally designed for three homes to go in as firefighting props to go in and breach the ceilings, to maybe do search and rescues, to uh, basically pull into a subdivision or small cul-de-sac subdivision and be able to have uh, incident size ups and things like that is actually saying, forget it. We're just going to develop that as actually a small subdivision in there, and then we'll have some affordable housing for our people. Um, we still want to definitely use that as a training center. Nobody wants to live where there's a training center going on, right? But we're looking at other options and kind of thinking outside the box. We have talked with other community partners, including uh, police departments, sheriff's office, um, school districts, other organizations that are looking at also similar situations and similar solutions. The problem is, is even when there are apartment complexes or even there's um, subdivisions that are built that are said, hey, we're going to dedicate this to public safety or dedicate it for teachers as affordable housing, it's affordable for the first year. And then once the market gets a hold of it, then it's gone out the window. And when I say the market gets a hold of it, I'll throw out some numbers for anybody who's listening, just so then you understand. You said you got here about two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. So in 2019, in August, the average median price for in the city of Prescott that was sold was 392000 This last month, the average median price in the city of Prescott was 640000 <laughs> That is a 63.2% increase in the average median price. That's in three years for Prescott Valley because everybody says, well, Prescott's, you know, that's a retirement community. That's way more expensive than anywhere else. For Prescott Valley, 
The average median price in 2019 in August <clears throat> was, um, let's see, 200, excuse me, yep, $285,550. This last month, it was $510,000. That's a 78.6% increase in three years in the average median price whole, uh, that was sold, not what they listed it for, but actually what they sold it for in Prescott Valley. And then we can even say, well, you know what, that's Prescott Valley and Prescott. Chino Valley is much more affordable. Chino Valley, $325,950 was back in 2019. Today, $485,000 is the average median price sold. That's a 48.8% increase. There is no organization, no private company, nowhere that is going to keep their wages to be able to match up to those kind of increases in affordable housing. And so we are, as a community in the Quad City area, we are seeing a trend where we are gonna start forcing our people out of this area. And I don't mean the people that are coming in to retire or the people that are well off. I'm talking about the service industry, the hospital workers, um, the people that you would think shouldn't have any problems, the firefighters, the police officers, uh, the police department is having in uh, the city of Prescott is having an issue with recruitment right now. Um, the city of Prescott has 40 vacant positions open right now um, that they cannot fill, not because they're not willing to pay. It's because their pay doesn't match up for the cost of living. And so people are unable to be able to f uh, fulfill those positions. So when we talk about that this is an issue, this becomes a community issue because I guarantee that those people who can maybe afford some of the housing and can't afford some of those cost of living increases, um, they're relying upon, obviously, fire departments to get there or police officers to get there or hospital workers to work or uh, even the people in, in retail industry or service industry, that there's still going to be people there. And service industry I also mean like air conditioning techs. IT people, you know, all of those people that come out and actually fix and help us in our day-to-day -day operations and day-to-day -day lives. So what we're looking at is hopefully in the near future, our organization will look at supporting some projects, supporting some projects that are not only saying, hey, listen, we're going to help with the affordable housing right now, but then we're also able to control that affordable housing or that affordable subdivision or that affordable area for the future so that even as market variations happen, we can still control the pricing on that. And we can control the ability for people to be able to gain into those areas that really need it. Not investors that are gonna drive the price up, but actually people that actually use it and need it. So mm -hmm. anyways, that's our uh, CAFMA Connect. One last statistic as we go out the door, just to let you know. And when you think of well, we're only talking about, you know, the people that are um, lower income that we got to worry about this with. Um, I'm going to just share a little story with you. When I was looking for housing out in Prescott and Prescott Valley um, about three years ago, I was shocked that the amount that I was going to be paying for rent was twice my house payment, um, $2,800 a month. And that was what was available out there. And that was what I could afford for um, the size and the bedrooms and the necessary amenities for uh, my kids and my family. And so I think that that's when you're talking about the assistant chief of a, of a fire department also struggling with the same issues that a new firefighter does, that's a community issue. That's not just hey, listen, this is only the lower income or the less fortunate that we're talking about. So anyways, uh, that's CAFMA Connect. And if you have any questions, feel free to call our organization, our main administrative office. But uh, like I said, we're working with other partners in the community to hopefully address this issue. And if you uh, otherwise, we'll have Chief Freitag back here next week, hopefully. And if not, unfortunately, you get stuck with another assistant chief.